Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna do a DIY, and it's gonna be one of those like farmhouse type, farmhouse type piece of pan wreath. And my inspiration is from some of the members that post their DIY crafts of Dollar Tree items. I'm part of two groups. If you guys are interested in those groups, I will link them down below. So I'm part of these two Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree um Facebook groups where they do crafts using only Dollar Tree items or mostly all of Dollar Tree items. So I was inspired by all the pizza pan wreaths they've been making. So I decided to do my take, my version on them. So this is the pizza pan I got from Dollar Tree. And I did not have sandpaper with me handy, so I just used a nail file. <laughs> so I try to buff as much of the shine off. So now I'm going to use this white paint. This is from Apple Barrel, and this is in the shade white. I'm going to go ahead and use a foam brush. I already had the foam brush and the paint. The paint, I get it like for 50 cents from Walmart. So I'm going ahead and do my first coat of white paint. Most of the crafts I watch on the Dollar Tree group, they use the Waverly chalk paint, but I'm doing with what I have handy without going and spending more money especially money that I don't have. So I'm gonna do the first layer, let it dry, and then I go ahead and do a second layer, a second coat. I try to only stay with like up and down brush strokes so the paint won't come off. And I use a blow dryer between each coat to help speed up the drying process. So back to these Facebook groups, I really enjoy them. I love being part of them because I get inspired by so many crafts that people make. So maybe in this channel, you'll see more crafts of me making. So this one is going to be like a spring type wreath. I really wanted to try out the piece of pan wreath because they look so fun. So this is a little like picket fence wooden and I got that off Dollar Tree, obviously. So I'm just removing the price tag. And I wanted it to be like a white picket fence. But then I was going to camouflage with the background. So what I did is go ahead and paint it like brown shades. So I'm going to remove the twine that it has in the back. Just with these little scissors. Those little scissors are from Dollar Tree as well. They come in handy for nails or crafts. So like I said, I'm going to paint it like a brown shade. I was really trying to go for like a dark brown shade, but my brush had a little bit of white in it still. So I went ahead and just tried to get the darker shade of brown as much as I could. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. Now, I didn't want that background to be too white. So I went with a little bit of black and white mixing together like a grayish tone and just did some light brush strokes to make it look like if it was like a rustic feel vibe to it. I don't know what would you call that effect. Okay, so now I'm going to let this dry. I only did one coat of that. So now I'm going to use these craft wood cubes. Those are from Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a pack of 36 little cubes. Now uh, the fence, the little picket fence part here, I didn't want it to be 
too close to the pizza pan because I want to add some floral behind it. So I'm using these little cubes to make it rise up and pop off of the pizza pan. So I'm adding three cubes on the bottom and then two on the sides. I am using my hot glue gun to adhere these little cubes to the wood. Um, what I was gonna say? Oh, the glue sticks I use is the Gorilla Glue one and they work really good. I got that one off Walmart. <laughs> This is how it's gonna look i didn't bother to color the little cubes because they're not gonna show i'm gonna put a bow in the bottom so for the first flowers i'm gonna use this one is the lavender so i'm here trying to figure out how i want them to be spread out behind the fence The other floral stem I got is the baby breath and they're like little styrofoam little mini balls glued into bunches. I thought this went perfect and I also going to use onion grass. For the onion grass I wanted it to be on the sides of the fence but it kind of didn't work out so in the end you will see how I use the onion grass. So I'm going to go ahead and use my pliers and begin to cut off every stem off the lavender. So now I'm gonna begin to glue each of the stems behind the fence and I want to spread them out evenly, put four like in the center and then one on each side like hanging. And if I find that the leaves are being covered by the fence, I go ahead and cut them off. And then I will glue them in front of the fence to give it like a 3D effect. So here's a little leaf that I was talking about. It was not going to show. It was covered in the back. So instead of just leaving it back there, I just cut it off and glue it onto the side of one of the little um, wooden parts of the fence to make it look like it's coming out from the back. I do not let anything go to waste here. So this is it for all the lavenders. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the baby breath and I'm going to add them like randomly. So I wanted to add the onion grass on the sides of the leaf, I mean of the fence, but it came off because of the paint. I knew that was going to happen. So that's where I did not end up putting the onion grass. Instead, I put it behind the fence, which I will show you that at the end. So if you're going to glue on top of the paint, it's going to come off. I knew I knew that was gonna happen, but I didn't think of it. So what I did at the bottom next to the fence is 
I scraped off some of the paint because I'm gonna add some leaves there that you will see. So now what I'm doing is adding this rope. Um, I've been had this rope, but I've seen some similar in Dollar Tree. I was actually looking for the twine color one, but they didn't have none at my local Dollar Tree. So I went with this rope that I've been had. So I'm gonna add this on the border of the piece of pan and I'm gonna do it two times, as you can see. Now I'm cutting off the extra that is left over and I decided to start at the bottom because that's where I'm going to put the bow that I'm going to create. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. So here are the leaves that I'm going to add. Now these leaves are leftovers from a St. Patrick's Day clover wreath I did. So instead of letting that sit there not being used, I decided to add it onto the bottom of the fence to make it look like it's sticking out from the bottom. Now in the center of those leaves, I decided to use some of the baby breath and add them to the center, just like one little bunch. And that is how it came out. So now it's time to make the bow. What I do here is like two loops on each side. And then with the leftover piece, I fold it because I don't want the white ribbon part. And then I wrap it in the center to create the bow. Then I will go ahead and hot glue that in the center. And the part that is hot glued, I will put that at the bottom where it won't show. So I had another leaf left over, so I'm going to use that behind the bow. And then in the center of that leaf, I'm going to add a green flower that I had left over from the clover wreath that I made. here's how it looked and I noticed there was something missing and it was the bottom part of the bow I totally forgot to glue it behind the bow before I glued it on the piece of pan so here I'm just cutting two little pieces and then I'm cutting the tips at an angle so it could look like a v-shape and then I will go ahead and 
fold them at the opposite end and then glue them together and then I will glue it behind the piece of pan. On top of that, I'm just going to use a piece of ribbon with hot glue gun to secure that that little piece of that burlap ribbon won't come off. And I do that as well for the ribbon that I'm going to add behind a piece of pan where it will hang. Here is the onion grass so like I said I'm removing it from the that one stem that they're all attached to and then I'm just gonna spread it out behind the lavender and just stick it inside and that is pretty much it for the onion grass is the finished look I totally love how it came out I love how that green flower makes it pop too although the leaves are different shades of green they still work together good so I'm gonna probably put this one out for like springtime maybe during May and June because for April I want to put out like a Easter one I don't know if I should do one just like this and just add like little Easter eggs around there. I don't know yet. I will show you guys if I do make one for Easter. So here is another version without the onion grass. It totally looks cute too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.